Hey, Pastor Ray Barnett here with you. Glad that you could be with me here on the Oasis. And as always, I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, or a good evening, depending on what time you're watching this broadcast. Well, as you can see, for those of you who watch on a regular basis, we're in a different location here. And uh, <clears throat> this is my library. I'll take, a, I'll take the time, not today, but I'll take the time to kind of show you around. I did this once before, a couple of years back. i show you my library. I have, I have one room that's just my library. The room right over here next door is my office. Then at my house, I have even more books, which you may have been able to see in yesterday's broadcast when I was doing it from home. And um, this may be our location for cold winter months up here in uh, upstate New York. We'll see. But it's, uh, it's not as, oh, it's not the way I would have it, you know. If I lived in a warm state, I'd be outside all the time to provide a more, well, I always try to provide a more, uh, well, I try to provide an atmosphere that looks a little bit more like, uh, you know, an oasis, not a Middle East oasis, but this is my library. Maybe it'll kind of add to the intellectual uh, aspect of uh, the content. Who knows? Basically, we need Christ and we need his help. That's what it boils down to in the end. I can't even show you here. I don't think I can. That one chest set. One right in front of me, the second one. Over here is a, a third one. I don't think you can see that. <laughs> so, yes, I do play chess. No, I'm not all that great. Just kind of accumulated these chess sets over the years. I have uh, this one on my left here microphone a little bit. This one I have on my left here. I've been playing a chess game for 17 years. Not the same game, but one of the ladies in the church, one of the sisters in the church, um, and I, we make two moves, or we used to make two moves a week. And then um, it goes on for six, eight months, we just play one game. And whoever wins, uh, we just, uh, we start again. Anyway, I would prefer to be outside. I really would. But we had some snow and ice last night. It's, I don't know, it's only in the 30s. And uh, no can do. No can do. All right. You know, I've said this to you before. The more I talk to people, the more I look at social media, the more read the news and so on and so forth. There's just a ton of people that are really struggling with many things, of course, but they're struggling with mental health issues such as we deal with here, anxiety and depression. So now with over 400 videos that I've done on the subject, I want to keep going forward particularly for those of you who've been with me for some time. But then we have new subscribers that are joining, and I have to kind of uh, moderate a little bit to bring them up to speed on certain things. So it won't hurt for us to review the basics of what causes anxiety and uh, panic attacks, anxiety attacks, and then, of course, there's depression. Let me start by saying that Depression and anxiety are almost always joined together. One may be much more dominant than the other, but they, they usually go pretty much hand in hand. Now, on uh, some broadcasts in the past, and, and just recently I, I was mentioning this, just a few broadcasts back, that you have to realize those of you who suffer from anxiety and depression and mental health issues, you have to realize that 
how should I how should I phrase this? You have to realize that there are people in your life who genuinely love you, genuinely are concerned about you, who suffer along with you. In other words, you know, take take a mother, a father, you know, people who care about their children when the child's sick. It's you know, it's not a um, it's not a pleasant thing, and there's a lot of worry and a lot of concern. But when you when you have acute symptoms of some, as some of you do, acute depression, acute panic, anxiety, and nervousness, and all these things that we talk about, it gets it gets a bit difficult to understand. And I'm going to use this phrase that I think we can all you can relate to. It's hard to understand that there's other people in the room. What I mean is that though you are the one who's suffering primarily from your depression and your anxiety, it's not infrequent that people who suffer from these things, you, it's not infrequent that you lose touch with the people around you in this respect that you become so, um, I'll use the word attentive, to your own symptoms that you forget that there's people around you who, if they're not suffering with you, and I have mentioned to you this, this to you on other broadcasts too, if they're not suffering with you, then they've gotten to a place where they just are having a hard time dealing with you. Right? That's not your fault. And remember this too, nervous symptoms, um, I mean, there's some exceptions to what I'm about to say, but nervous symptoms are just something that you're born with. You're born with an extra sensitive nervous system. That's nervous symptoms. Depression can have different causes, so I won't, um, I won't try to enumerate them, but to go back to, to, to staying on point, there are other people in the room. And naturally, you're, you want relief. You want these symptoms to end. But what can happen is that you become so attentive to your own symptoms, you forget about the people around you. This, in my mind, this has always been one of the difficult things to get across to people who um, suffer from anxiety and depression and so on. Because naturally, you know, the complaint would be, I'm the one that's suffering. Not my family, not my wife, not my husband, not my mother, not my father, and so on. And that's, yes, that's true, maybe true. But, and this is what I, I tell people who, when, whenever they're sick with anything, it doesn't give you a sovereign right or a permanent hall pass to make everybody around you miserable. So here's one extreme. Depression is, is uh, you know, classic. One of the classic uh, signs of depression or just mental health issues is isolation, where you're really isolated from people. And people, people just, I don't know, they, they act like they don't care or... Perhaps they've gotten to the point that they don't care. So you're isolated. And that's that's very. Um, it's part of the stigma. It's part of the the battle that uh, that you struggle with. People with mental health issues struggle with isolation. But when it's not really that, you know, I was thinking of schizophrenia. That's uh, that's a real classic example of constantly being isolated. You know, they isolate themselves. But when it's not that, and you have family, and you're kind of, you know, somewhat involved, somewhat connected, you may forget that these people have rights, too. These people have a right to, you know, a peaceful meal, let's say, or whatever it may be. Now, keep in mind, I keep reminding you of this, I've been dealing with this subject for about 50 years, so I'm not, I'm not a novice. And to speak to you that have the symptoms, that you have the anxiety, you have the panic attacks, you have the depression, and to say to you what I'm pretty much saying in so many words is 
try to think of others as well. Is, is, I think it's a tough sell. I think it's a tough thing to get across. Try to think of other people. Yes, uh, by the way, this broadcast is dedicated to you that, that suffer. But if we don't deal with the subject of you being connected to the outer environment, which means I bring in, you know, things that are happening in the news or the country, the world, um, and your family and your job, then, then we're, we're pretty much doing maybe half of a job, or I'm doing half of a job by not connecting you to outer events like your family or your friends or your, or your job. You have to take into consideration that even though you are suffering, and some of you, you know, pretty, pretty badly, that you have to, well, let me put it to you this way. The best case scenario is that you have people you can actually confide in. Mom, dad, uh, your husband, your wife, again, somebody you can confide in and explain your suffering. But not cross over into the constant, almost incessant complaint or complaining about it. It's a tough balance to strike. And part of the training that I talk to you about so much here. This, this broadcast is not given to philosophy about mental health and, I don't know, just uh, exotic cures that some people sell. It's like snake oil salesmen, some of them. We're dedicated to doing the hard training, the hard training that it takes to regain your mental health, be free from anxieties, be free from your depressions, that's what this is all about. So what I'm going to say to you today is to learn the difference between sovereignty and fellowship. You're in a house. There are people that live in your house. They're family. Presumably they're family. family. That means you're not sovereign. Now, I'm in my office right here. Well, this is my library, but I'm in here by myself. So... If I want to take my sneakers off and put my feet up on the table, which I'm not going to do, but if I wanted to do that, then I could do it. There's nobody here. And I could always say it's my office. But if I have a meeting around this table, which I do from time to time, or have guests in here, well, I'm not going to do that. The difference is, is that at one point I'm sovereign because I'm by myself. And the other is that I have fellowship with other people and I have to take into, their, into consideration their feelings, their... Um, their rights. So let me just say this to you today. This is like one of those really rough lessons for, for you that suffer from anxiety and depression. Is to remind yourself that sovereignty, that means you know, you're kind of alone and you can pretty much do what you want. And being in fellowship are, are two different things. So you can't keep acting like a sovereign or in a sovereign way, when you're with other people, they have their rights too. Very tough lesson. If you, renew, if you um, download the renewed principles that I have on the website at timefortruth.com, uh, you'll see that's one of the principles that's on the, on the list because it is very much, um, very much uh, kind of a routine thing that people who have nervous symptoms go through, they become very much concentrated on their own self and they kind of forget other people and it just makes matters worse. That's really the point of this. It makes matters worse for you, it makes matters worse for everybody else and what we're, we're trying to achieve here is a sense of peace inside. So if th none of this made sense to you, review it again. And then keep in mind that the point that I was making today is that this, as well as anything else I've said on this channel, or on this broadcast, is a way to peace. Just, just remember the difference between sovereignty, what you can do when you're all alone, and actually when you could do when you're praying to God. You're sovereign. You could speak to God right from the depths of your heart. Cannot, and many times should not, do that with other people. Depends. All right? So... Sovereignty is one thing, fellowship is another. Let's make sure we know the difference and help yourself to be cured 
from all of your afflictions. So let me pray for you. Father, once again, I pray for my friends, ask you to help them to learn. This is a hard lesson, I think, harder than some of the others I teach, that they must know the difference between being sovereign and being in fellowship with other people. They must know the difference between the fact that they're suffering, but doesn't give them the permanent hall pass to make everybody around them uh, miserable as well. Tough lesson. But that's what we're called to do, the training that Jesus teaches us. Anyway, grant my friends peace today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, again, we have a lot of people out there suffering from depression, anxiety, and mental health issues, so share these broadcasts. Those of you who are subscribed, share them. Uh, remember, each lesson here is a little slice, so it's not the whole picture. Don't watch one broadcast, get discouraged, and say, this has nothing to do with me. This 400 and something videos here. I repeat certain things, but um, yeah, I try to do each lesson so there's something something new for you to grab onto. So it's a lot of work. Anyway, share the videos with people who need them. Make sure that you um, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you. I always accent the fact that we are a small group, which works to our advantage. It means I can, I can listen to your comments, pray for you, which I do and so on. So if you'd like to be part of us, subscribe, hit the notification button, and don't forget to share these broadcasts. All right, where exactly we're going to be while the weather gets cold for the next few months, I don't know, but probably going to be in here. And um, as always, I always remind you to make sure that no matter what you do, no matter what happens, make sure the peace of Christ rules in your heart. God bless you. Lord willing, I'll see you here again tomorrow on The Oasis.